I'm Tom Franti with UNL Extension. I'm here on UNL's East Campus to look at two green infrastructure sites. Today, we'll visit with UNL's MS4 coordinator, with landscape architects, and with the design engineers who worked on these projects. We're here at UNL's Veterinary Diagnostic Center to talk about the bioretention cell and detention cell here they use to manage their stormwater runoff. We'll talk with Patrick Boulos, UNL's MS4 program coordinator, and with UNL landscape architect Emily Deeker. We'll also visit with Carrie Thompson, the landscape architect, and Gary Norton, the civil engineer who did the design. Patrick, would you tell us how this system fits in with UNL's MS4 program? Absolutely. So the bioretention basin uh, was installed as part of the uh, requirement for UNL to uh, treat the first half inch of stormwater. So when they put this bioretention basin in, uh, basically it is going to capture the majority of the stormwater discharge from the new VDC building um, and then treat it before it discharges into Dead Man's Run. So the location of the bioretention basin is really, it's uh, to the northwest of the building, which is actually the same direction as the watershed. Um, so the natural flow for the watershed is in the same direction. Emily, would you give us an overview of how this system works, especially related to this aesthetic of the plant selection and things? Sure, sure, I can do that. So this is a kind of a little bit more complicated system that we've done on campus. Um, it starts way back at the um, end of the building plaza on the south side, and there's kind of a waterway and kind of channel system that takes water from the surface and moves it across this way. And it's a very structured landscape and a very structured kind of system on that side. And then once we get across the parking lot, it starts to deconstruct a little bit and it becomes these kind of bioretention swales. And then we have um, the water coming into it. So then eventually it gets into the more naturalistic bioretention area. Kerry, tell us how, how this design fits that treatment train a model. From the rooftop and the downspout here, exiting the building, um, going along this runnel, and then this runnel was above grade, mainly due to the utilities that run underneath this to the building. So it actually serves as a functional purpose too. And then eventually exits down into this kind of um, artful treatment of the water um, dropping down into the um, runnel that's kind of down below here next to the plaza. So people working in the offices here, um, when it's raining, they can actually see how the water moves from the building um, through the site and into the landscape. Further on down the rental system, there's openings that open out into the landscape. So actually this um, landscape up here actually serves as a little bit of water, stormwater infiltration up here. And then eventually that drain goes down into and across the parking lot over to the um, bioretention cell. So some of the key features we have, we have the weir structure. Um, that really slows down the storm water before it gets into the basin. Uh, the main piece of the bioretention basin would be the amended soil. Um, and then also, be so below the amended soil, we have an aggregate layer with an under drain. And that really slows down the water. That amended soil um, with the vegetation allows that storm water to be treated. Um, there's two four bays at the entrance of the bioretention basin on either side. This project has been in place for a few years now. Would you tell us how it got started? Sure, thanks, Tom. Um, we started on this project through an RFP for the expansion of the Vet Diagnostic Laboratory. And really, um, the whole emphasis of the design was really connecting the site with the building um, into the treatment train, and then eventually down to the uh, bioretention garden that you see here behind us. We also wanted to use this as a teaching garden for UNL East Campus. There's horticulture and landscape design classes on site. So we worked with Kim Todd and Richard Sutton at the time. We picked plants that they thought would um, work well and give them a little bit of diversity. So when they're taking students around the campus, they 
have some different plants that they could show and plants that thrive in this type of environment too. I see that there's a series of cascading weirs at the upper end of the system here and ponding water behind those weirs. Is that something you intentionally put into the design? Yes, we did. Uh, so you'll see behind me um, some of the stormwater exits the parking lot into the um, into the bioretention and where the weirs are. And so that water actually ponds up behind it and it typically dries out. We've had rain for the last three days now, so you see a little bit more water than usual. Again, as a feature of tying the building architecture into the site, um, these weirs are an extension of the lines off the building and get um, users and hopefully students out into the bioretention area and, and engage with the um, uh, bioretention garden. Uh, but you can see a lot of the plants that like water are thriving in here, like the Joe Pye weed and the liatris and the prairie drop seed. How has the planting gone? Were all your plants successful early on? Did you have to come back and do some replanting or some maintenance planting? Most, most of our plantings did well, as you can see. Um, the Joe Pye weed did well. Um, the Rudbeckia, you could see, has struggled a little bit, but um, hasn't done too bad. Of course, the Liatris is doing well in this area, and the prairie drop seed you can see behind. All in all, um, the plantings did pretty well out here that we originally um, used and designed with. From a design standpoint, was this designed for a certain rainfall depth or, or a certain water quality volume storm? Uh, yeah. Um... At the time that this project was designed, Lincoln had not yet adopted any of their current post-construction stormwater requirements. And so uh, working with UNL uh, staff, they, they allowed us to utilize the city of Omaha's standards because they had been um, in place for several years. Uh, and so we utilized those. And so we, at a minimum, had to meet the 210 and 100 pre-developed uh, runoff flows and then we also had to treat uh, one half inch um, off of the entire uh, disturbed area of the project. So Gary, would you tell us about some of the special features of this project that help with water quality? Sure, um, overall the, the bioretention basin uh, has what has an under drain in it, which is amended soils um, that is over a perforated pipe. Um, so that's the main filtration system. However, some of the things we built into this or designed into it are two four bays. And the purpose of those four bays is to provide some additional water quality uh, aspect to the pond to get some of the larger sands and salts and stuff out of it uh, before it gets into the main chamber. Um, it also helps in maintenance for UNL. They can clean out the smaller four bays uh, versus the whole system. And then just the size of the pond um, gets the contact time and the settling time to get some of the, uh, the solids to settle out of the water. Um, and then the plants themselves also serve as a, a major factor in the filtering of the storm water. It seems to me the size of this detention pond is much bigger than it needs to be for the parking lot around this building. Is that part of an expansion in the future or why is the detention pond so large? Early in the design, uh, UNL facilities informed us that the main storm sewer line that runs through here is also uh, above uh, at capacity and surcharges many times. And so what we did is we tried to, to size this basin to catch as much as we reasonably could to prevent that water from getting into that pipe and further uh, distress it. They over-engineered the capacity. So it allows, it kind of opens up the ability for us to look at future development in this area and then also know that we have some capacity in this basin so that we can use uh, we can use some of the storage volume that's left over. Systems like this have to be at the bottom end of the construction site. And that is always a challenge on a project um, to, to sequence the work so that it's you know, economical for the contractor, um, but also accounts for, again, keeping that silt out of that under drain until you know, plants are stabilized and upstream areas are stabilized so that under drain can function as it's intended. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the project? Yeah, and I think this is just a, this is a unique project um, for us because it was more complicated. Um, and we are thinking about all the way from the top of the um, drainage system all the way to the bottom. I think that's just a unique to other things that we've done on campus, so. From here, 
we'll move over to the East Campus Green Parking Lot and again talk with Patrick and Emily as well as Tyler Paulson, the civil engineer who worked on the design of that parking lot. Emily, would you tell us a little bit of the background of how this project got started here on East Campus? Sure. Um, this is a great project that exemplifies how a master plan is really just a guiding document to development and can be something that changes as you move through development on a campus. When we started to look at this space, which was tennis courts at the time, um, we really wanted to still embrace the aspect of the master plan that this was supposed to be a green area or a green space and a connector between other green spaces on campus. So. As we were planning, we talked about it being a green parking lot, if you want to call it that. And how could we um, elevate this parking lot as one of our first green infrastructure parking lots? So the idea behind it all was have tennis courts get removed and then install a, a parking lot to serve these students out on campus. The, what we developed was kind of a system that captures that first half inch and actually exceeds that half inch, as well as providing a south basin that we developed um, that captures even off-site uh, storm water that discharges. There's three unique um, bioretention basin stormwater structures. Um, there are the um, more of kind of like a uh, bioretention basins in the parking lot. There's three of those. Those all have under drains and the amended soils. And then we're actually standing in the bioretention basin that's kind of to the north east of the parking lot where a lot of the parking lot drains to. We have the third bioretention basin which is to the south of us and that actually collects rainwater from the dental college parking lot. So essentially uh, when it rains um, water will uh, sheet flow off of the parking lot and it's directed towards um, these channels that will drop into a four bay and these four bays are lined with permeable pavers um, and then the permeable pavers uh, will kind of filter out some of the larger sediment. Beneath the permeable pavers are an aggregate layer. After uh, percolating through the aggregate layer will go into a drain tile. Uh, once the storm water goes through the drain tile it gets discharged to the uh, storm sewer offsite. So it's a specifically engineered medium that we kind of identified in our specs. Uh, it's kind of a sand and soil mix. Um, the pipe itself is a kind of a perforated four inch pipe, discharges off site. A couple other features for this parking lot is we have a flume to the north east of us that will direct storm water to the bioretention basin and discharges into this four bay where there's permeable pavement on the bottom. If it overtops, into the riprap, which will continue to treat the large sediment, slow down the velocity of the stormwater as it enters the bioretention basin. So every project has its challenges. What are some things that really made you tear your hair out on this project? Uh, one of the real challenges we had was about halfway through the design, we decided to incorporate a south basin that captured um, existing dental college parking runoff. And the significant challenge of that was just south of this parking lot, there's an existing duck bank as well as existing other utilities that were there only three to four feet down and right where our basin was going. So we had to work around a series of challenges and how, how are we going to get our storm sewer piping um, in that area without impacting that existing duck bank and existing other utilities. Basically all the runoff from this dental college comes into this basin, percolates through that basin through that soil medium. Um, there's an underdrain pipe that runs kind of along that center at that low point and then discharges to the west and then north um, past our new parking lot and just keeps running north off-site. Uh, any overflow gets captured into that overflow structure that we kind of developed on this northwest corner. Um, but the majority of our rain events would get captured by this four bay and then into the basin and then off-site. I understand there was student involvement. Could you explain that too? Yes, absolutely. So something that we're always looking forward um, to doing is how do we engage our students in um, experimental learning. And this is an opportunity that we use all the time on East Campus with our landscape design and horticulture and agronomy. I approached Kim Todd um, in her landscape design class and asked if she wanted to use it as a project in her class, and she did. So, um, so she gave it, it was already designed from um, where all the lines for the curbs were. So it was really just a planting project for them, a planting design project. And they gave us um, probably about 10 different plans. 
And then after the project was done, after their class was over, we still needed a planting plan for this. So Kim actually took the time and kind of coalesced all of the student work together and gave me um, a planting plan. And a lot of these also, some of the plants are plants that she wants to teach from, from her plant ID classes. Um, so we were able to get quite a few of the plant materials that she asked. Um, one of the ones behind us over here is the um, sugar, shack but sugar Shack button bush. And that was um, a new cultivar of the button bush that she wanted to teach. So um, Henry's Garnet Sweet Spire is in this planting plant. Um, red fall color, white blooms, just a great plant. Um, also really loving the common rush. It just really performed well for us and been a really neat, interesting plant with texture. Um, and then this um, Radon's favorite aster that we used in the islands, um, which just has really performed really well for us. Um, it was one of the plants that the um, uh, students wanted to use and Kim wanted to teach from. So um, it's been a double whammy. These two green infrastructure projects are great examples of how the university is embracing uh, green infrastructure in their design. Thanks for stopping by. We really enjoyed being able to show you our two stormwater features that we have. We have plenty more stormwater features on City and East Campus. Hopefully here in the next couple of months we're going to have a story map on our website where we can show you uh, where each one of these locations are and you can plan a visit. <laughs>